In my first video on Robert Morse, I was attacked for not critiquing what he actually says. Apparently, most people just don't care that he is a liar. I've been working on a follow-up for some time, and the greatest problem is trying to condense the enormous weight of his ignorance into a video short enough for people to actually watch. In this video, I'm going to talk about Morse's opinions on cancer. In order to criticise Morse, the first task is to understand what he is actually saying, and this is harder than it sounds. I've watched hours of Morse's videos on the subject of cancer, but he's actually very vague in explaining what cancer is. Let's take a look at some clips. Where's the poop? <laughs> Where's the poop? That's what's happening. That's what tumors are. Tumors are when tumors are nothing but occlusions or blockages in the lymph system, and then you start getting swelling. The body then forms these tumors, cysts, pimples, boils. All these things are the same stuff. And uh, the body has to do something with all these wastes. Ah. Oh. You know, the best thing to do is we'll just put them in a storeroom. We'll just put all this waste that can't get through the kidneys and the skin because they're blocked. We'll just store it. And what do we call a storage room for cellular waste? Tumors, cysts, boils and pimples. The reality of cancer is very different. Cells in the human body divide to replace each other as they wear out. The rate of division is balanced against the rate of cell death. Cancer occurs when cells begin to divide out of control. This is what causes tumours in solid cancers. Different cell types give rise to different types of cancer. For example, when your bone cells divide out of control, you grow extra bone. And when your skin cells divide out of control, you grow extra skin. If you cut into a tumour, you will not find a fluid-filled cavity. You will find a solid mass of cells. This conception of cancer as a disease of cell division is not controversial and is broadly accepted in both conventional and alternative medicine. Morse's next big misunderstanding is on the subject of how cancers spread or metastasize. The ability of a tumor to invade tissue or spread throughout the body is really what separates benign tumors from malignant disease. Morse is so ignorant on this subject, it is actually a source of great amusement for himself. Like, okay, so an ovarian cell somehow got out, out of the cat. Evacuated. Evacuated. <laughs> Leave the, <laughs> leave the pack. <laughs> and, and then, and then somehow climbed through the gates, through the closures, up the stream of, I don't know how I got through the blood vessel in the first place, but somehow you got in there and you climbed, somehow you bypassed all the lungs, the heart, you got through there somehow and you climbed into the lungs, you go, oh man, I'm home. Oh, hi guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a hurting cell, they call me a cancer cell, and I'm going to make you one too. What I find to be very telling in this clip is that Morse says, Oh hi guys, I'm a cancer cell, and I'm going to make you one too. This betrays Morse's lack of understanding. Cancer cells don't cause the cells around them to become cancerous, and no one is saying that. The driving force behind the growth of tumors is the continued division of existing cancer cells, not the recruitment of neighboring cells. New tumors can be established when circulating cancer cells become lodged in niches throughout the body and continue to divide and grow. It's obvious from this clip that Morse is dismissing and laughing at a theory that he has never understood. The joke is entirely on him. You're right, your lip notes. And the lip nodes is where wastes are broken down or damaged cells. This is why you see damaged or cancer cells in lip nodes. Where else are they going to go? Your venous capillaries are too small to take the cell back into the blood system. Moore seems to think that the capillaries are too narrow for cancer cells to move through. However, this is clearly wrong. Capillaries have to be wide enough for blood cells to move through, and blood cells aren't unusually small. Well, then how does a cell from your liver that has been damaged and become cancerous, how does that cell travel, let's say, to your lung? Or how does that cell, let's say an ovarian cancer somehow created brain cancer or lung cancer, how did a cell out of the ovary travel some, somehow mysteriously from the ovaries to the lungs? Explain that to me. This isn't difficult to explain. As tumors grow, they invade blood vessels and cells break off circulating around the body. Secondary tumors are often found in the lungs or liver because the tight network of capillaries more easily traps cells. We know that cancer spreads in this way. 
Certain cell types, for example lung or pancreatic cells, have a particular morphology and express specific proteins through which they can be identified. Even when they start dividing out of control and growing into tumours, they still retain their distinctive characteristics, so it is possible to identify the source of the original tumour. There are a number of facts that seriously undermine Morse's lymphatic constipation theory. Probably the most important point to consider is that animals without lymphatic systems are capable of developing cancer. Cancer is known to affect sharks, crabs and clams. This would be simply impossible if Morse's theory of lymphatic constipation is true. In the broadest sense, diseases of cellular proliferation can develop in any multicellular organism. Whilst we don't say that plants get cancer, the essential mechanism is still the same and plants do not have a lymphatic system. You can cause tumours in mice by injecting them with human cancer cells. Whilst this certainly isn't a pleasant practice, it does count against the lymphatic constipation model because the tumours that grow as a result of these injections are made up of new human cells that have divided inside of the mouse. The tumours are not made of backed up cellular waste as Morse would expect. Certain cancers are in fact naturally transmittable. This is very rare in humans, but both dogs and Tasmanian devils are vulnerable to these forms of cancer that spread by physical contact. The original cells started dividing out of control and are passed from host to host, outliving the individual that initiated the disease. It isn't easy to understand how Morse's lymphatic constipation theory can account for these cancers and how they spread geographically. All of these points and so much more evidence support out of control cellular proliferation as the mechanism of cancer and this has been known for at least a hundred years. Morse's suggested treatment for cancer is almost invariably grape fasting and of course buying his herbs to get the lymph moving in order to drain tumours. However, with a clear understanding of what cancer really is, surgery is an obvious solution. If all of the cancerous cells can be cut out from the body, there will be none left to replicate and your disease can be cured. Cancer often spreads through lymph nodes and removing lymph nodes has been shown to be effective at increasing survival. Because of Morse's insane obsession with the importance of lymph nodes and his misunderstanding of the mechanism of cancer, he strongly advises against this too. This advice will cost lives if it is taken seriously. The evidence for dietary intervention in the treatment of cancer is mixed. The evidence for a diet high in fruit and vegetables in the prevention of cancer is good, but this should not be confused with using diet to cure an existing cancer. I think I will make an entirely separate video on the subject of testimonials, but I'll quickly point out that because Morse doesn't know what cancer is, he can't diagnose it or tell you when it is cured. He doesn't perform any trials of his methods or present the results of any long-term follow-up of his customers. We cannot rely only on the positive testimonials of surviving patients. By definition, the dead cannot present their testimonial. I didn't talk about what causes cells to begin proliferating in the first place, which is a glaring omission in a video on the subject of cancer. But this is a video about Robert Morse's beliefs, and he has always maintained that tumours are pockets of fluid, not replicating cells. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please like the video. If you know someone who is using Morse's methods, you might consider sharing this video with them. Finally, my last video on Robert Morse received a lot of comments, and I have read and responded to all of them. Thanks to everyone who left supportive comments, this means a lot to me and will encourage me to make more videos. Thanks also to the people who left angry and rude comments, I hope you appreciate that I took the time to respond to each comment and left the ratings and comments entirely open for your feedback. 